I'm drowning here in this ocean of ingredients. And what am I swimming to over here in this kitchen of what we call cooking with Sonic Blue? I'll tell you. We have a lot of ingredients. Should I name them off or you can you just easily see? We got eggplant, we got flour, we got garlic, we got onion, we got cheese, we got sugar, we got uh, breadcrumbs, we got black pepper, we got salt, we got ground beef, we got butter, we got diced tomatoes, tomato paste, sugar. Did I say sugar? I don't remember. We got mozzarella cheese. And no, this is Parmesan cheese, and we got my blend of special seasonings. We have, uh, gosh, I know I'm missing something. We have olive oil and milk. I think that's everything. Now, I know you're probably thinking, gee, well, Sonic Blue, what are you making today that's going to accommodate all of these ingredients? I must be either A, a glutton for punishment, or B, I really want to try something new. And I really want to give you something new, but this is insane! Well, if you haven't guessed already, all of these ingredients are going into what we're going to be making tonight as moussaka. Moussaka is a Greek dish that involves eggplants. And I saw a couple of these at Walmart and I thought, eggplants. I can make my usual eggplant dish that I usually make, or we can try something different with these. Because I want to see if other recipes taste just as good as that uh, eggplant parmesan that I usually make or can we make it into something else and then a light bulb went on in my head that's better and then a light bulb went off in my head and said you know we haven't had Greek food in a while how about we make moussaka and I said good idea brain that's not a very good idea after all because look at all the ingredients we have to put into it but you know what I'm a cook I can deal with it what we're gonna do, that was the oven, folks. <laughs> what we're gonna do, first of all, I wanna point out that we have a half of a chopped onion here, that's what that is. And let me move some ingredients to the side, because hmm, heaven only knows I need some space on the counter, but it's very difficult when you have little counter space and even smaller room for cutting. We are going to cut about a, Probably about a half inch thick, maybe a quarter to a half inch thick of our discs of eggplant. And they are going to be the tops and bottoms of our moussaka. What we're going to do is make some room on this counter. So what we need to do is take all of our freshly cut eggplant that we just cut up, take them over here to the sink, and we have our colander set up here. And we're just going to kind of deal them out like this, like so, like so. I'm gonna just deal them out a little bit, deal them out, deal them out, and go for your second eggplant. This takes two good sized eggplants. That's mm. a good size right there. It's a typical size. Doesn't have to be monster eggplants, unless you really like leftovers. And if you have any leftover eggplant, you can always cover it up in breadcrumbs and deep fry it. Or you can make a serving or two of eggplant mozzarella. I have made a long time ago. So those of you that have not seen my eggplant mozzarella, please look it up on the YouTube channel somewhere. It's floating around in cyberspace. I'm sure you'll find it. Okay. Now, a lot of the time when you cut eggplant, sometimes you won't cut them all evenly, but you know what? This isn't Hell's Kitchen. I'm not going to harp on you. If it so happens, it happens. Just remember to keep your fingers very safe away from any cutting blades. Now we're just going to take that end piece, being very careful, and there you have it. Now we're going to come back over here, deal this stuff out, make sure they're even. Now, once that's done, we're going to come over here and get some salt. And just regular sea salt will do, and we're just going to sprinkle some salt over the tops of these eggplants. Nice. Get them all down in there. To the point where they're nice and sprinkled with the salt. You probably need to get some more sea salt, but we're a little on the low side. Alright, so that should do it. Now what we're going to do with this, 
just gonna put it in the colander here and the salt's gonna help all of these eggplants sweat it out. For 30 minutes, they're gonna be sitting in here sweating it out. They need to soften before we go into the oven and they're only gonna go in for a very short time, maybe like 10 minutes. Hey, you wanna sip? This is good stuff. This is vermouth. It goes great with gin. You make a martini. Olive oil. What are you doing? Making Greek food? Actually, we are. Bar Hub and Bill, say goodbye. Goodbye. As we probably should add about two tablespoons of this stuff. About two tablespoons worth of olive oil, just enough to give the bottom a good coating with a little bit extra on the top for good measure, a little bit more than that. Thank you. And now we're talking. See, when you get a good layer of your bottom skillet covered and you got enough running around the edge, that is a good amount of oil for this task. Turn your skillet on to high and let that oil kind of just heat up a bit. And kind of. Okay, now we're going to get into our quarter teaspoon. I always use a quarter teaspoon when I measure out a clove of garlic. It's about my semanos, more or less. Why did I speak Spanish? I don't know. But it's usually more or less about a quarter tablespoon for a clove. About like that there. So we're just going to throw that in first, get your garlic going. That's about, well, two and a half cloves or two really good sized cloves of garlic, but that's all you really need. Ooh, is that reek? Yeah, garlic is strong. It is very strong, especially when it's minced and it's fresh in the jar. That's true. Now, this is going to heat up on a little bit slow. As you can hear, the oil is sizzling. The garlic is garlicking. If that's even a word, how does garlic garlic around? I don't know. I think I coined a new phrase. Hey, anything impossible on cooking with sonic glue. We just coined a new phrase. The garlic is now garlicking. So can you see all the garlic? It's just garlicking around in there. It's garlicking and frolicking. Who knew? I don't know. But you know what? We're inventing things here in the kitchen. We're testing out new things, exciting new recipes, exotic recipes, and sometimes even south of the border, but this time we are going all out Greek for moussaka. And you know what they say in Greece whenever whenever you go to a Greek restaurant, you know what the customers always say, I came here to eat Greece, not Greece. <laughs> you get it? It's a joke. But anyway, you'll laugh later. <laughs> See? Told you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to cry. <laughs> well, don't cry on my behalf because I didn't do it, man. Switch that around a bit, and that's going to get nice and toasted. So when we throw in our onion, like right now, that garlic will get nice and toasted by the time the onion here is translucent, soft, and ready for next step. I'm just going to saute these in the olive oil, mix together the garlic and the onion. Onion usually doesn't take very long to saute, especially in a skillet full of hot olive oil. And with the garlic blended together, it gives you quite an aroma that just can't be beat, except in Ronan's case, which he doesn't like onion. But, yeah. I wish I did, though. Oh, uh, it's That's a something wonderful, I really wish I could like. It is a wonderful thing, especially sauteed onions. Might not like them raw, but sauteed onions make a huge difference, let me tell you. I'm not just saying that because I want to get you to try onions sometime. I don't try onions, though. Did you really? Sauté? Oh. Well, I never tried sauté, no. See what I mean? Well, <laughs> you can try at least one. Well, I have just a little tiny one. Well, how about with something else? I don't think I... I just don't think it would be good by itself. Oh, sure. no, of course not. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a serving of this and I'll let you have a bite of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try a little bit, but, you know. And in the case that it doesn't taste very good... I'm sorry. I did my best. It's okay. You get a paper star. You get a little a paper star? star? Wow. You get, a, you get a little sticker. That's a better than a cardboard star. star. That's true. <laughs> oh, always silliness in the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> take a look at this. Take a look at this. Look at this garlic. Look at that garlic. See how it's nice and toasted and it changed color? That is when your toasted garlic is about ready and your onion should also equally be just about ready to be removed. Okay, we're gonna take all of our onions out of the skillet and we're gonna take as much of the garlic with it as possible, but leave the oil because, well, some of the oil is okay, but you don't wanna leave, you, wanna, you don't wanna grab all of it. 
Just kind of take the side of your spoon there, kind of grab up the onions. A little bit of oil is all right. So we're going to take this over here and we're going to dry it off after we've rinsed it. We're going to cook our next step, which is going to be the ground beef. And this is going to go in the center of our moussaka. I want to eat some ground beef. <laughs> Ground turkey, but we have ground turkey. We have two different brands here, so if you see there are two different colors, they came from two different factories. And here it comes. Here it comes. Ah, <laughs> there it is. All right. Textures is different on that one. And we're gonna cook this up. That's always fun. We are going to ground and brown our ground turkey. Brown and ground. It's already ground. Like we that. just need to brown it. <laughs> you see that? Oh wow, they're in a sauna. They are in a sauna. That's what salt does to eggplant. If you leave them out for 30 minutes, they sweat. Okay, drain all the juices that you can from your tomatoes. And what we're going to do is use half of this can. So we're going to store half of this can for later. All right, now, once your ground beef is browned or... Ground and browned. I should really explain something here. Now, normally, uh, for moussaka, you would be using ground lamb. Since we don't have access to ground lamb right now, uh, we, you could substitute with ground beef. Since we don't have any access to ground beef right now, we're substituting that with another substitution, ground turkey. Ground turkey actually, I think, tastes a little closer to lamb than uh, beef does. Más o menos. Did I just... More <laughs> or less. I don't know why I keep saying Kay. that in Spanish. Kay. Okay, so once your ground lamb, or ground turkey in this case, is browned... Ground, browned, whatever it is. Take your onion and garlic, mix that back in to your skillet. Sort of reintroduce these foods back into its heated home. Give it a good stir. There we go. It's not going to be too much onion in there and not going to be very much garlic, but it's all going to go in there really nicely. And we're also going to need to dump all of this tomato in here. This is all going to be filling that's going into our moussaka. Oh, now I get you. Yep. I didn't get it first. You put all of these ingredients together, mix them well with a spoon. We'll also need Three tablespoons of tomato paste. There's one. Just look how that slams down in there and just... Okay, a little bit more than that. Right. Level it off there. There's two. Two. There we go. Want some of this, kitty? No, you don't want any of this. It's tomato paste. Kitty does not want tomato paste. Trust me on that one, because you might not like it. You're a finicky eater. But he's There's got three. such fat cheeks, though, you'd never expect it. Oh, yeah. Only three. <laughs> Hi, kitty. Thank you. <laughs> kitty grabbed me. He's just trying to help you cook. Here's a cup of water. Now, this is where this comes in a little interesting here, because we don't have beef bouillon, we don't have beef stock. If you have it, beef stock, one cup, will go in there. Or if you don't have beef stock, then one bu beef bouillon cube to one cup of water will do you just fine. But since we don't have that, one cup of water... We'll do it somehow. <laughs> we only just need the one. Maybe need two because we got two pounds of ground. It does ground. smell good. It really does. We got two pounds of ground turkey going in, in there. Give this a good stir and this helps break down our uh, tomato paste that we put in and kind of helps smooth it out. Now what we're going to do is going to stir this until that tomato paste, wherever the heck it went off to, yeah, it's fine. in there somewhere, <laughs> uh, makes the water thicker. I think it's already mixed in because look how thick that water is already. That's true. It's in there. It's already mixing in with our, there's a little bit of it I found, but it's in there. Once that's done, okay, to substitute the need for beef, we can throw this away. <laughs> the need for beef. The need for beef. We need beef. To substitute that, I have created my usual seasoning concoction. That sounds good. And this goes good on practically anything. Poultry, red meats, white meats. You probably think of a dozen <sighs> other things. I love that smell. It is a great smell. And I'll give you the recipe for that, too. This or is, will we? This, oh, I've always had before. This is my... This is Sonic Blue's original blend, and here's how to follow that recipe. You need four tablespoons of uh, seasoned salt. You need a quarter of a teaspoon of all these other ingredients, including paprika, chili powder, Old Bay, if you have it, it's optional, uh, ground cumin, uh, garlic powder, and onion powder. You mix all that together, and you created Sonic Blue's own mix. I gave you the secret. Oh, and don't forget a quarter teaspoon 
time. We're going to add a lot of this stuff. About that much. It's really good on uh, rice, too. Oh, it does. It, oh, Especially yes. if you add some chicken to it, it really works good. Now, if you don't have beef bouillon, if you don't have beef stock, then you can take my seasonings and you can make it sort of kind of beefy kind of flavored, you know? It's just seasoning, but it will make any meal that you have sort of wake up a little bit and give you some extra flavor that your cuisines will just love. And when it gets cooked in, take a smell. Of course, it would be better without hair. Thank you, Rigby and Mordecai. Oh, and that is so heavenly of a smell. Oh, this is going to be some good musaka because it's not going to be plain on water. I've added my seasonings in here to substitute for beef bouillon, but if you have the beef bouillon, feel free to add that. If you don't, then use my seasonings. It really will make your meal. Or do both. Or both. You could do both. Now, I probably used equivalent to a package of taco seasoning from Ortega. About that equivalency. So if you're not How much sure, ounces is that? Uh, 1.25 ounces. Okay, great. Now we know. <laughs> there you go. So about an ounce to an ounce and a quarter of these seasonings will do you a world of justice. Look at this. Now you can see the juices and filling are starting to change color. And that's because of the seasonings that's in there with the water, the tomatoes, the onions, the garlic, everything mixing together the way you want it, the way it should be. We're not done yet, because we also need to add oregano, oregano, oregano. Just add it to taste if you want to. But I usually like to add about a quarter tablespoon, teaspoon. Oh my gosh, that's so stupid. Teaspoon. It's flying everywhere. It is, because it's dry. Oh, that makes sense. That's cool. And about a quarter teaspoon of dry oregano. Let it get saturated through the whole thing. Yep, and give it a good stir. And this will add a nice accent to an already existing beautiful muzaka filling. I actually made a mistake. It's supposed to be two tablespoons of oregano. We need more. Oh my gosh. We need more oregano. That wasn't enough. So give it a good two tablespoons worth. Because I only added a quarter of a teaspoon. That's not enough. We need more. Oh shoot. Okay, we're going to get our half a teaspoon here. We're going to get one and a half teaspoons of sugar. One and a half teaspoons of just regular plain old domino sugar. Now what this is going to do is going to give a little sweetness to you. Not too much, but just enough to give you a nice zing. Okay, once that sugar is really mixed in there. Okay, we're going to need three quarters of teaspoons of salt. Three quarters this. of teaspoons. We got Three it. Three quarter teaspoons of salt. There it is. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. Come on out, salt. I see you in there. I'm just going to eyeball that. Yeah. No, it's going to take the whole thing. All right, let's see. Good enough. There's about three quarters of a teaspoon in there. Hey, Dad, does that smell good to you? It smells very good. All right. It smells good to me, too. Well, we got two positive smells good. Don't you wish you were in the kitchen now because you could be smelling what we're smelling and you could be eating what we're eating. So that's why you're at home and you're following this recipe. Oh man, I love scents. And a little pepper to taste. Nothing ever hurts. Well, black, oh uh, yeah, some black, black pepper. pepper to taste. I was gonna say some pepper never hurts. <laughs> It'll make you sneeze and cough, but it never hurts. Nope. Okay, we are done with our fill filling. So let us go ahead and turn off the fire on our filling. You let your filling here kind of set. And what we're going to do is we're going to now make our sauce. Okay, first of all, we're going to need four tablespoons of butter. You melt that butter. Oh, yeah, melt that butter. Melt that butter, melt that butter. Okay, what we're going to need to do, this is an all-purpose gluten-free flour. This is made from rice flour, and we're just going to use this because a lot of people cannot eat the regular flour, so we're going to substitute it with gluten-free rice flour. All right, we're only need five tablespoons of flour. Okay, now take this whisk. And whisk away. Whisk it. Whisk it good. Dun, 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 dun. Until you get a roux out of your butter That's and your flour. That's interesting. It becomes a roux there. It's See like that? 
dough almost. Exactly. Or pre dough. It's a base that will be oh. made for our sauce. Oh, 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 That's I what a roux is. I never heard of that before. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's we stuff. also need to break out our three cups of milk. There it goes. Now, you know what they say in Greece whenever you throw something down into a hot pan? You know what they say? Hopla! We also need a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. So, nutmeg really helps stuff. Yeah, it does. Quarter teaspoon. And I'm just going to eyeball that a bit. Not that. Maybe a little bit more, more or less. I didn't say mas o menos. Okay, we have about Holy a half shit. a cup of Parmigiana. Add that in and it's going to thicken right up. Okay, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, and don't let it get gloppy. That's why we're having a whisk. And stir it, and you'll notice after you add your cheese, look how thick it's getting. Now it's no longer a sauce. Now it's coming, becoming a cheese. Make it nice and thick. And see, it's all homemade right here. See how thick it is. That's like the cheese melting in, making a beautiful bechamel sauce. Hopla! Gotta shout that every time you make Greek food. Okay, what we're gonna do is just break an egg in there. One egg, and that'll help make it fluffy. Your sauce <laughs> Watch is out for the cake really, batter. it looks like cake batter. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the consistency. Now, if you see your whisk is coated nice like that, it means that your pachama sauce, sauce, your pachama sauce, 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 your pachama sauce is just about good as it will get. So, once that's done, take it off of the heat. Are you ready to layer everything? No, we're not. Remember our eggplant we started a long time ago? Come back over here. Perfect. Look at that, look at that. Sweat wow. right up there. That does sweat. Yes, it does. Now we're gonna carefully take our eggplants and we're just gonna bake this for 10 minutes and let all of that moisture kind of set back in with the salt. Here is the result of our sweated eggplant slices. That's the effect of letting them sit in a colander with salt. I can't believe that. This will keep them moist, so when you put these in for 10 solid minutes, they won't dry out, and it'll be the absolute perfect softness. 10 minutes is all it takes, so it's 6.30 now. We'll pull them out at 6.40. We have to let this kind of cook until it gets soft enough because you don't want it undercooked. You don't want it overcooked because it's overcooked then it will turn into mush. Oh, yeah, if it's undercooked, gross. then it becomes bitter. So you've got to make sure that all of your eggplants don't taste too bitter, don't taste like mush because it's very easy to mess up eggplant because they're very delicate. Yeah. It is 10 minutes on the dot. Let's check up on our eggplante. Now you know what I mean. It smells really fragrant. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for some Greek magic. All right, all right, instead of saying abracadabra and all those magic words, we're gonna shout the one word that all the Greeks are famous for. Can you say it with me? One, two, three, hapla! Whoa! Isn't that amazing? And you don't have to be Greek in order to know Greek magic. Let's take an empty springform pan. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these nice soft eggplants, not too mushy. They came out perfectly. And we're just going to line a circular pan. All right, first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to lay down our eggplant, as you can see, as much as you can in a nice round fashion. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to take our filling. We're just going to take our filling and just kind of drizzle it over the top there, kind of spread it around a bit. It's a good thing we picked up that extra be or that extra log of uh, ground turkey or else I don't know what yeah what do. I ran short on that so I'm gonna try to keep that and keep the rest of it for the other one if need be so I'm gonna kind of play around with the recipe here okay now top it with more eggplant doesn't matter if it fits because it's all gonna be one big consistent recipe here for muzaka. Moussaka, moussaka. Okay, and now for the rest of the, no, because I need to put the chamel on the top of this first. Make sure that this gets the right consistency too. 
kind of spread it around. It's going to be thick once it cools, so you really got to work with this when it's hot. But you don't want to overcook it too because you don't want it to singe. Okay, so once you got all your bachamel, don't forget to add your breadcrumbs on the top. It might be a little too much, but you just oh, who cares? give a shake. Even it out. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, he never I can scrape like it, it off the top if need be. You never know if you like it. You never know if you can scrape it off the top, but you still... It's okay to cheat on your diet once in a while. Oh boy. Just imagine after all of that, we're ready for the oven. All right, let me just stick this in because this one is our main moussaka. Excuse me. I'm just checking the moussaka right now. It looks about done. Actually, it all looks about that. 20 minutes at 300, about 400 degrees Fahrenheit in the oven for about 20 minutes. Cooks it to about the consistency of this. Now this looks like a proper moussaka. This one on the other hand, well actually that does look like a good moussaka too. That one there, looks got a little bit too <laughs> burnt around the edges so we could just trim around the edge of there. Uh, to recap what we've done, because I didn't really show exactly everything that mm. we've done, so let's recap what we've done here and to make sure everybody's got what, uh, what you need to uh, in order to throw together your own moussaka. Uh, especially if you've seen us do it right here in the kitchen. Now, a proper moussaka consists of ground lamb, but if you don't have ground lamb, you gotta make substitutions. Ground beef works, but so does ground turkey, and we're gonna try this tonight. So we got two good-sized eggplants, we put them in the colander, and we sprinkled some salt over them to help them sweat. We left them in there for about a half an hour, and then we turned our oven, preheated it to about 390 degrees Fahrenheit, and cooked them for about 10 minutes to let them cook in, kind of soften them up a bit. We uh, removed the uh, eggplant, and we made our filling, uh, consisting of a uh, two pounds of ground turkey. Then I mixed in a good size uh, packet worth of uh, my homemade seasonings, and I'll show you the recipe and how to make that. Uh, and remember, it's four tablespoons of seasoning salt and a quarter teaspoon of each of the following ingredients. Garlic powder, onion powder, thyme, paprika, chili powder, Old Bay, and cumin. And mix that all together and you got my seasonings. Very easy. So, we mixed that together with the beef and kind of turned it into a seasoned beef, or a seasoned ground turkey, I should say. Then we made our bachamel sauce, which consists of a three cups of milk, one cup of flour, and a half a cup of Parmesan cheese mixed together with about a about two tablespoons worth of uh, nutmeg. Mixed that together and made ourselves the uh, bachamel sauce, and we poured it directly over the top after we've added another layer of the eggplant. So we got eggplant, the filling, more eggplant, and the bachamel and we make, baked it for about 20 minutes and comes out looking like this. Now, how well does it taste? That is the question we're going to answer right now as we grab our plate and serve up some moussaka and hopefully we'll get as close to the taste of grease without actually being there, but I don't know. I mean, with all the substitutions we made, who knows? So now I'm going to grab a spatula and we're going to just dig in. There's your moussaka which is the eggplant, the filling, the eggplant, and the pajamal. And we're gonna see how well this tastes. So, fingers crossed that I actually made something decent for the very first time. Oh, it smells good, I'll tell you that. Let's get a little bit of everything here. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that actually came out real good. Now, as soon as the blisters go down on my tongue for how hot that was, I can continue. <laughs> well, well, let's see, there goes the cat. There goes the cat, and he's wanting to know what's in the kitchen of cooking with sonic glue. Would you believe something you've never heard of before, and probably most of this household has never heard before. But it's always great to broaden your horizons with the best foods that you can find, and throw them together and make something exotic, make something that you've never made before. It's an adventure in the kitchen waiting to happen. All you need to do is know what the ingredients are, and then go get them, bring them back, put them together, and you'll be impressed with what you can do yourself. As for this moussaka, it's not traditional moussaka, but it'll do. The eggplant had a nice, very nice consistency to it. It wasn't too overdone, wasn't too underdone, just right. Nice and soft, but not soggy. That's what you want in your eggplant. 
Now it's got a nice little kick to it from the Old Bay that's in the seasoning. Not too much of a spicy kick, mind you, but enough of a kick to give your taste buds a little party in your mouth, so to speak. If we had more bachamel sauce, this would look awesome if we really were able to cover this, but we had to take all that sauce and carry it a long way. So if we were able to just use this on one pan, this would look a lot better than it does. But looks are one thing, tastes are entirely another. And this does taste really good. And it's all really good for you too. So cooking with the best ingredients, the right ingredients, and the freshest ingredients will ensure that your meals will turn out to be just about as good as they look. Even if they're not supposed to look like what they are, they're still good enough to eat and still very good for you and very healthy. So. I'd say this is pretty much a wrap, so tune in next time in Cooking with Sonic Blue. You'll never know what we're going to do next, but you're probably guaranteed it's going to be a doozy of a recipe. So until next time, this is Cooking with Sonic Blue saying see you next time, and don't forget... Hopla! Where'd it go? That was my musica! It was right here! No? Just take this thing. Bye, folks! Oh, I'm on a roll tonight, folks. I'm making musica. Of course, my mind is going to be scattered and scatterbrained and trying to find myself when I cannot find myself anymore. And I'm screaming, Pepto, take me away! No, that's Calcon. Cal Calgon, take me. Calgon, not Gaviscon. Calgon, take me away. I'm getting my commercials mixed up, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Kitty Cameo! Say hello, Kitty. Hello, Kitty. Hey, Kitty. And to make our bechamel sauce, we need four. Did I splash that on you? Yes. Gosh, why do you use such a magnet for splatters? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try not to swirl this, but this is a deep pan. Look yeah, at that. I don't know how it happened. I don't either. It's I'm just karma. unlucky. It's karma. What did okay. I do to deserve it? Both tablespoons. <laughs> of Sonic Blue sneezes. No. No. You know it's Eggland's best when they got that little stamp it's on so it. Cute. Can you imagine that? I picture some little guy on the on the on the uh, assembly lines going. Careful. I'm gonna pause.